Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So uh, let's get into today's session. Today's session, accessing the magnetic moment with one simple strategy. So one of the most important things is that you aren't problem solving your life, okay? But for many of us, when we live in a problem reality, every single one of our choices are designed to try to make our life better. And because of that, we can never have them, okay? And, and obviously, you guys know this, this is in the basics. But the basics of this is, if I'm feeling uh, you know, unhappy, and I think this, is go, this, this outcome, let's say it's more money, is going to make me feel happy, I will never be able to achieve that because I'm not it. I'm, an, I'm being unhappy, thinking if I have that, then I will be happy. And the truth is, is what you're actually doing is saying money has the power to make me happy. You follow it? And so that this structure never, ever works. You can never hold on to it. Uh, and all that happens is maybe you get the money, but you're still unhappy, unhappy, unhappy. The only way to, to truly manifest with power and precision and to keep it, whether that's love or good health or abundance or, uh, you know, to create a movement or, or have the family want, whatever it is, whatever it is, you must be it first. And so in order to be it first, you need to arrive at uh, everything that you choose to feel and experience without needing anything else. You get to have it right now. Okay, we call this the magnetic moment because once you are already it, then you are free to choose what you want and move to it easily. If you are already happier than you could ever be right now, if you are already happier there than you could ever be right now, well, then you just choose what it is that you want. You just get to play. You get to say, hey, for fun, I'd like to, you know, own a home there. For fun, I'd like to have that experience. For fun, I'd like to travel the world. For fun, I'd like a relationship. And you can do it for fun. Does this make sense, everybody? It, it, it's for fun. And, and when your choices and manifestation is just for fun, then you can just easily go and have it without all of this other resistance. So all change happens now. It's about becoming it now. And once you become it now, then I want that, I want that, I want that, whatever I'd like to choose. I'd like to uh, start a charity. I'd like to. So, so that's it. So you must become it now. And so we've, we've given a bit of structure to, to having it now. And we call these uh, the core four choices or the orienting choices. And, and there's four of them. And would I have a certified coach or someone type in the four choices? Uh, in no order, they are, I choose a life I love. Uh, I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. Uh, I choose to live my true nature and purpose. And I choose to be healthy and vital. Um, Abby's uh, post those in right now. And, and so, so we choose those first and we experience those first. There's no good reason why you can't have those right now except for the BS reasons that you have given yourself that something else is powerful right? All of that, those other, you know, the BS, right? The belief systems that, that stop you having it. And so we first must arrive at having it now, except our ego or our self-conscious always wants to say, well, I can't be happy now. I cannot be abundant now. I cannot now. I need a relationship and I need money and I need this and, 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 and all these things. And that is the lie that keeps us trapped. That is literally the golden cage that keeps us stuck thinking, if I had, if I had, if I had, and it's it's literally the trap of humanity. If I had, if I had, if we just had electric, uh, you know, washing machine, if we just had lights, if we just had, uh, you know, this this uh, this drug, or if we just had, if we just could, if we just could, it's now. We get to be it now. And so we've created a bit of structure uh, for you around this with the four. So it's very important. And it was very important for me. I spent a long time chasing, you know, thinking if I had, if I had, if I had, if I had, only to arrive at that and then find ways to lose it again because I wasn't practiced at already being it. When I finally surrendered and allowed myself to be powerful and realized I can be abundant right now, there's nothing more abundant than a moment. There's nothing more spiritual than a human experience. There's nothing more exciting than what it is I do. If I don't find it now, I'll never find it anywhere else. I've got air in my lungs and blood in my veins. I have some aspect of health now. 
You see, I have it now. And am I using what I have now to the full? You know, I think some people think that the human race is living longer. I just think we're dying longer. I just think we spend more time not living, right? And so someone said to me one time, they said, but Chris, you know, oh, I really want to do this work, but Chris, I'm 82 years old. And you know, what's really the point of doing this? And I said that if you live one year as a powerful creator, you got more than most people. Because most people just have a lot of time being powerless, not living a life they love, thinking that something else is going to give it to them. Is it true? And, and so what I realized is once I accepted that I'm it now and I can have it all now, then I just get to play. What would be a fun game to play? You know, what would be fun things to manifest? Once you really get that, that, that nothing out there makes you different. So you say, yeah, true. I'd like to go make a few million dollars a month, million dollars a day, whatever. That'd be a fun game to play. Yeah, I want to have, that'd be a fun thing to, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. I'd like that. Yeah, that's cool. But I'm going to stay the same. And, and it shifts you out of this powerless idea where you think that if you had this, you would be different and change. And so this is where the work happens. It's about arriving at it without needing anything. That's when you're, you're powerful. Okay. That's when, when it's powerful. Someone's typed in, what about feeling worthy? Just, just there, there's no such thing as worthy or unworthy. No such thing. It's a lie. There's so many lies. Between, uh, you know, line up a thousand babies and tell me which one's unworthy. There's no, no such thing. You can't fix unworthy because unworthy uh, doesn't make sense. There's no, the unworthy isn't, doesn't exist. There's no such thing. Everyone is worthy. Is it, a, is it true? There's no unworth. There's no, there's, that doesn't exist. There's some absolute rubbish out there, you know, where there's such a thing as being worthy or not being worthy. Rubbish. No, no, everyone's worthy. It's just what you choose. Absolutely. You're not broken. You are, you are everything you want. You have it all right now. No, no such thing as, as being worthy or unworthy doesn't, doesn't exist. It only exists to those that choose to buy into um, that lie, that deceit and, and choose to experience that. Other, other than that, every single one of us are as worthy as each other. So there's a really uh, powerful thing you can do to guide your unconscious. Because as we know, there's many different aspects or facets of this thing we call consciousness, yeah? And we divide it into three things, right? These three things are super conscious, unconscious, and self-conscious in no order. Okay, they, these are what they are, the three levels of consciousness. And, and, uh, and that's, that's exciting. And th these three levels of consciousness all want different things. And so a lot of times there's a fight and there's this uh, cruel game that humanity has to play, which is we were given a conscious facility that wants to create new things in life. You know, we want to go make something different. We want to have more money. We want to have a better relationship. We want to live in a different house. We want to have the world feel a different way. We want to, we want things to be different and better, right? We have this. And then the cruel trick is, is that we're still given the animal part of the brain back here, the unconscious part of us that literally just wants to keep everything the same. See, there's a part of us that just wants to keep us alive. And this contradiction is, is uh, as we all experience, is, is quite a uh, horrendous game that we have to play. I want all these new things. I want all this, but I want everything to stay the same because I don't want to test anything new. The unconscious is, is the one that actually guides what's allowed in your life. And this is fascinating. It's so fascinating. And this is why, you know, the law of attraction or think and grow rich and all these things, they, they don't work. They don't work because they're half truths. So half of the truth is you choose and experience and connect to what you want. The other half is you must update your unconscious because whatever your unconscious believes to be true and safe and survivable, it will allow you to have in your life. If it doesn't believe it's true or safe, it won't allow you to have it. So today we're going to talk about how to guide the unconscious. Okay. But how to guide the unconscious. The questions that you ask yourself set the tone for your thought patterns. So it's critical to understand that by using open-ended questions, you guide your unconscious. See, your brain, your consciousness is a question asking and answering mechanism. If you get asked a question, your brain has to search for the answer. As it searches for the answer, it has to go through packets of information and experience all that information in order to find the answer. Okay. 
So by using a question, it's like I throw a tennis ball out into the universe and your consciousness, like a little puppy, chases wherever that tennis ball goes and brings it back. So if I ask you, what is the best and most enjoyable thing you've experienced today? Your brain searches for it. And then if I ask a different question and I say, what is the most frustrating thing you've experienced? Your brain will now search for it. You see, what are the top three things you would like to have in your life? So as you use a question, a question is what is going to direct where your consciousness goes. Many of us don't use questions very well. In fact, a lot of us have a set of like questions that are habitual that we ask ourselves regularly. And these questions lead us to places that we don't really want to go anymore. And what's interesting is if you can change the questions or catch those, you can make a big difference. So here's some questions that lead us to places that we don't want to go to. How about this? What's the point of this? What's the point of this? Why is this happening to me? How has this happened to me again? How about this? What's wrong with me? What course do I need to fix me? How come I'm not there yet? Why do, see these questions? Who's got some other really bad questions that lead them down this uh, winding path called victimhood or powerlessness? Why am I stuck? How come I haven't got there yet? And, and so when you ask this question, your unconscious has to find the answer. So my favorite question of all time is what would the person I'm becoming do right now? And it's literally my life focusing question. It's literally my life focusing question is what would the person I'm becoming do right now? It is, it is what I see everything through. What would the person I'm becoming do right now? If I'm in an argument, what does the, what would the person I'm going to I'm becoming do right now? If I'm hiring, if I'm firing, if I'm making decisions, what would the person I'm becoming do right now is literally the lens that I guide all decisions through. It is the, it is the best question and, and, and honestly, it's changed my life more than a lot, that one question. So here's some other, other questions is, you know, what in my life makes me happy? And let me just ask you, what in your life makes you happy? What in your life makes you happy? And as I ask that question, notice how it changes how you feel. What's good? Yeah, right on, Christy. That's it. What's good about your life? What's good about your life? What's good about your today? What could you be grateful for right now? What could you be grateful for right now? Now, just fill me in. As I ask these questions to you, notice what your brain does. Where are you successful in life right now? Right? Really interesting. With a question, your brain has to go there. What you can do is you can use questions to guide your consciousness, unconscious and superconscious, to new answers. And this is what we want to talk about today. See, if, for example, you've tried something new, let's say for whatever crazy reason, take yourself back to your childhood and right back at some point, and you're choosing for whatever reason, you're choosing to learn to skateboard for whatever reason that you want to do that. And you've tried three times in a row. Now, you could go two different ways. You've tried three times. It's not working. And you could ask yourself, well, why can't I get it? And that interesting question is likely to lead to an answer like, well, I'm not coordinated enough or I'm never good at things like this or, you know, this isn't the right sport for me. Right? Uh. And this question can carry on into adulthood. So now you're being told by your coach to go put on a webinar. 
And the question that you're asking yourself is how can I make sure that people aren't going to judge me? You're walking into a, a relationship and you're thinking, how can I figure out if this person is a narcissist? You're walking into a healing and you're, ask, and you're asking yourself, how will this one work when all the others have failed? You see that? By asking those questions, which started way back then, the question has become a habit. What's wrong with me? Why am I broken? And as soon as you ask the question, your super conscious helps you to make up some bloody reasons. Because guess what? If I sat around asking the question, because here's something I don't have a problem. I don't really have a problem with confidence, right? My confidence in me, that's a, I, I feel like I'm pretty confident. But if I ask myself a, a different question, like how am I going to fail right now? Or how am I not going to measure up? I can create some unconfidence. I can create anxiety. But how did I create that? I did it. And can I get a yes if you guys get this in the chat box? I got it by asking a question and teaching my superconscious to go and find the answer. This is way better than affirmations. See, you can sit there and you can go, I am rich, I am rich, I am rich. And your brain goes, no, you're not. Or you can ask yourself, uh, a different question. How am I improving today? How can I find a way to make money today? How could I? How? What possible ways? And then you go into a different frame. How could I feel confident right now? I've just started getting back on the phones and talking to people in a, in a sales opportunity. And I'm asking some different questions. The first question I'm asking is I'm saying, how can I connect with this person? Where can I find common ground? How can I help them uh, understand that they need my program? How can I help them see that if they don't change, nothing changes? How can I let them know if you need an education and don't buy the education, you pay for it in different ways? How can I make a new friend? And these are the questions. So if I'm, I'm, I'm picking up a call, this person doesn't know they're going to get a call from me. And my question is, how can I inspire them? How can I make a new friend? How can I connect with them? How can I help them see, see that? And those questions lead me to some unique answers. Instead, other people who might be doing a sales call, they're going to say, oh, gosh, what is this person going to think? Oh, uh, gosh, this, how, how can I close them? I, and as I said, we don't talk about closing. We talk about opening, right? I don't want to close people. I want to open them to a new possibility. How do I open them to who they could be? How can I open them up? Open them up, close them down, whichever way you want to look at it. So the thing is, is your questions determine your intuition. The questions help you step into a new emotion. Questions are the most underrated, underused, but completely powerful tools in our superconscious toolbox. However, because everyone uses questions all the time, we overlook them. We overlook them and we go, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go do that fancy recode thing and then keep asking myself, how can the recode fix me? How can the recode fix me? How can the recode fix me? And your brain goes, because you're broken, it never will. How can Chris Duncan fix me? And in the background, well, because you're powerless. You see that? And so whenever you ask those questions, you're going to get an answer. So instead, take yourself back to you learning that, that skateboarding um, process again. And instead, you ask a different question. You say, well, what is it that I could do different? What do I need to do differently to be successful? See that? Instead of asking, why can't I get it? What do I need to do differently? Who could help me? You see? This question is framed in a solution. What am I already doing all right? You see that? As we start to ask these questions, then you're going to get different ideas. Maybe you get, okay, well, I don't know what I need to do differently. So who can help me? Well, I'm going to get a coach. Oh, I need to adjust my footing or put my arms out for balance. The question will encourage you to keep trying. So if you're having challenges uh, with your creations, I want you to ask a question, which is what question do I need to ask myself right now to feel different? Because the, <laughs> thanks Priya, because the question is the simplest and easiest way 
to guide your consciousness. See, what if I ask you all this right now? How could you get the most out of this session? How could you enjoy this session even more? What would you love to get out of this session that would make it worth the whole investment with conscious education forever? What one thing will you take away from this that will completely change your life? By using those questions, I've just put you in a completely different frame of mind, right? How can you enjoy today even more? How could you possibly find at least four new ways you can get the most out of today? How could you bring more joy and brevity and fun and excitement to today? How could you, for the rest of today, create more passion in your life than you have in the last week? What could you do today to surprise and delight your family? How could you make everyone's life better? Right? I mean, you just, if you just said, how could I make the rest of this day magical? How could I make this one count? What would I see these questions? I'm just asking questions. But as I ask them, it's coding up answers for you in a, in a format that has shifted your thinking from when you first got on the call. So questions are such a powerful force to change your mental and emotional state because to answer the question requires you to come up with answers. And these answers, by the nature of the question, you can have the guided answer. You know, what do I need to think about to feel excited about going to the gym tomorrow right you're sitting there oh god so this morning i got up it was quarter to four in the morning it was raining and i thought oh no one will know if i just like you know no one will know if i just lie in bed and then i thought to myself how would i like to feel what would i need to think about in order to go for a run and then i remembered that I bet, yeah, Lexi's not going for a run. <laughs> He's listening to, I was like, it'll feel good to turn up to work. And no, I went for a run and he did it. <laughs> and that was it. And I was like, that's all I needed. So I went for a run. <laughs> that's all I needed. And so once you, <laughs> once you ask yourself a question, then you'll get an answer. That will help you to, <laughs> to do what's needed. So the step one, um, Abby, could uh, could you put these four steps in the in the chat box, everyone? So ask an empowering question. Step two, as you think of the empowering answer, you naturally come up with references to support it. In the process of scanning your brain and scanning consciousness, you that has to focus your attention on these positive references. Does that make sense? Your empowered state then influences your next questions. Yeah. Thanks, Abby. How good is Abby, by the way, and the whole CEC team? I just want to shout them out. Has anyone had some great experiences with my team? Because I love these guys. They're absolute legends behind the scenes looking after us. So amazing, amazing crew. So this same process is, is what, how you can get into a disempowered state or an empowered state. So as you go out throughout your day, and what I want you to think about right now, you know, is some, you know, some questions, and we're going to go through a couple of processes here to use powerful questions and then do a recode. But I, I really want you to, uh, to think about what are some questions that you might like to just add into your life? You know, what are some questions that you could use just to get yourself back in that focus, you know? So here's some, you know, what in my life makes me happy? What in my life excites me? What am I proud of? What am I grateful for? What do I in my life do I enjoy the most? What in my life am I committed to? Who do I love? What makes me a loving person? Who loves me, right? So, you you know, and, and Abby's put the list in here from my notes, but, you know, if you have a question, what would the person I'm going to become right now? What is my outcome of this moment? How would I choose to, to be right now? What is it that I truly want? What is my true choice? How would I like to feel? And if you ask the question, how would I like to feel? Then you might ask yourself, well, what are things I could think about that could cause me to feel that way? You see? Isn't that just a nice little loop? 
Yeah. So we're going to do a really fun process uh, right now, and uh, it's really cool. It's a, and we've done this. I did this in the inner circle just recently on our immersion. So we're going to do a short inversion of it, and I also did it in the live events. Okay. And what it does is it goes into your core four choices and uses an open-ended question to help you feel that even more. So I'd like everybody to pick one of the core four choices, okay? And I'm going to help you step into a meditation using open-ended questions to truly feel uh, one of the four right now. So uh, can we get them typed in real quick again, Abby, the core four choices? There they are there. So uh, today, we're going to do one at a time. So today, I choose the end result of living a life I love, which is number one. Number two, I choose the end result of being the predominant creator of my life. Number three, I choose the end result of health and vitality. And four, I choose the end result of living my true nature and purpose. So really, really quick, which one are you going to work on? One, two, three, or four? Now, it's important that you work on these every single day. You choose these every single day because until you're living the magnetic moment, um, you're simply in a problem orientation. You really are. And, and, you know, and all you're going to do is create chaos in your life. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right, cool. So when you're ready, we're going to do, do a choice. And it doesn't require permission to your super conscious. Um, we'll do a recode in a little bit, but right now we're going to do uh, do a choice. Those of you that are coming to the live event uh, in San Diego or, or next year when we bring out more live events. By the way, there's about 15 tickets left to the live event in San Diego. And if you haven't got yours, uh, do not wait because they are flying out the door. Um, we will do a uh, do this process in person and in a much deeper way. Cool. All right. So so when you're ready, uh, let's let's do do these these choices. So when you're ready, please um, please close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, please say in your mind your choice. For example, I choose the end result of living a life I love. So whichever choice, just, just choose it. As you choose it, please step in to a future moment where you would already have created that choice. So I choose the end result of feel it and then go into a future memory and make up a moment that would let you know you've already experienced it. And do your best to ask yourself, how would it feel to already have that? Mm. What might you be doing if you already had that? And how would it feel? Breathe it in. And what might you say to yourself if you already were living that end result? Build a full sensory experience. What might you be seeing in that moment? Who would be there? What would they say to you? And remember to ask yourself, how good would it feel to have this? Step into this experience, accept it as truth. And feel it. As you feel it, I have a question for you. What are all the possible ways that you have this end result?
notice what comes to you and feel each other possible way you could have the same choice. And now a second question. What would you love to create in your life to feel this even more? What would you love to create in your life to feel this even more? And allow yourself to feel that. How can you take this feeling into your day? Open your eyes, come back and report back to me in the chat box. How was using open-ended questions with a choice? What was that like? Report back to me in the chat box. Amazing, inspired, nice, blissful, great guidance, amazing, magical, magical, amazing, more vivid, awesome, creative. Oh, there's too many amazing things coming in. Liberating, frees you up, full on, grateful, empowering, stimulating, wonderful. Now, clarity, thank you. All that I did was use questions, just questions. If you have trouble meditating, ask questions. The point of our meditation is to allow you to step into the experiences that you want and teach your consciousness that it's safe to have them. If you struggle with this, use questions because there's no way for your brain not to do it. How could I feel this even more? You see that if you're already good at uh, meditating, use questions to have an even more focused meditation. Cool. Open ended questions are. Uh, Jesse, this is from, it's in your uh, three-day event workbook, page 50. This is, this is such a simple and easy um, process, okay? However, most of us don't use questions because questions, I mean, that doesn't seem super conscious. Questions are throwing out and catching what it is that you want to bring back by having specific questions. So if, if, instead of asking yourself, how do I come up with a certain answer? Ask yourself, how do I come up with the perfect question? And by asking a perfect question, you will get the answer. Really good. Would you guys like to do another core choice with me? Give me a yes if you would. We can do another one. Same process. We've got time to do another one and we've still got heaps of time for a recode. And heaps is just an Australian term for loads. Loads of time. Cool. All right, so uh, amazing, Abby, uh, could you pop in those core four? So choose a different one if you like. Uh, let me know which one. So true nature and purpose, predominant creative force, which it, whichever it is, <laughs> feel it and double it. I love it. So choose a choice that, uh, that you'd like to work on. Remember that the more you're allowed to feel it now, the easier it will be to manifest. If you cannot, then you need to work on it. If you cannot access being rich and abundant, you cannot access it now, you won't manifest it. Your body will reject it. 
Thanks, Debbie. All right, we'll do the process again and then we'll get into a recode, okay? But it's very, very useful um, to use open-ended questions in this way. And will end in every area in your life. So when you're ready, please close your eyes and connect to your heart. Take a few nice deep breaths. And when you're ready, please make your choice. I choose the end result of. And as you make the choice, step into a future experience that you would be having when this is already created. Step into that experience and see it through your own eyes the best you can. How good would it feel to have this choice be true right now? If this choice was already true, what might you be doing or experiencing in your life? And how good would it feel? What might you say to yourself if this was already true? Build a full sensory experience. What might you see? Here, who would be there? Allow yourself to feel this to the full. Accept this moment as a true future memory. Notice how good that feels. And ask yourself, what are all the possible ways that you have this end result? Notice what comes to you and feel it. That's right. Feel it. Now, what would you love to create to feel this even more? What else could you create to feel this feeling even more? What else could be possible that you might like to manifest to feel this feeling even more? What could you let go of right now and allow this to be the truth? How good does that feel? Take a breath and ask yourself, what do I need to do to bring this into today? And come back uh, down back to the session back here, back into uh, 3D reality, back into this moment. How good is it? Report back to me. Who's going to be applying open-ended questions to their life in a way that they have never done before? It is so powerful. So powerful. Once you ask a question, your brain has to find the answer. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Such a good tool. Such a good tool. I was really inspired to talk to all of you about 
about questions, about open-ended questions and just their simplistic power. You know, I was just really inspired about that. And the reason is, is sometimes we can get ourselves so caught in the advanced stuff that we teach here. And the basics are also really good too, hey? And it's like, you know, there's basics. Uh, you know, someone's always comes to me, they say, Chris, I want to have a health transformation. I'm like, are you drinking enough water? Are you having enough nutrients? Are you getting enough sunlight? You know, do you have good friends around? What's your stress? It was like, they're like, no, no, no.